Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the about number twenty six on the final on the sample final exam. They want us to find the use the following data to calculate the delta H of formation for sodium oxide in a solid form. Okay, so sodium oxide will be Na two O solid. Okay, uh, so what we're actually trying to find now, typically when we're deriving equations in the past. Uh, we have done, been doing that to calculate lattice energy. However, we're not trying to find the lattice energy, and a lot of people have been making a mistake where they're like, okay, well, I'm deriving equations. I'm immediately trying to find out the lattice energy, in which case they have the wrong uh, initial, like, the, the wrong equation they're trying to work for. But this is the one you're trying to work for, because you're doing delta H of formation of sodium oxide in the solid form. So what you do is you write down sodium oxide solid form. You're doing delta H of formation, which means you're, con you're constructing it, right? From its base, from the basic elemental forms of whatever elements make up that compound. Okay, so here we have sodium and we have oxygen. So the first thing I usually like to do is I, I know sodium in its basic elemental form is you know sodium solid and the uh, and and oxygen is found usually as a gaseous uh, diatomic molecule, aka O2 gas. Right, both of these will have a delta H of formation of zero. Okay, then I deal with the coefficients. Okay, so I have two sodiums here. Okay, so I'm going to put a two in front of the sodiums here. I'm going to have one oxygen, which means I'm going to have one half of an O2 gas. Right, because that would be one oxygen gas. Okay, so now that is the equation we're hopefully going to get after we've derived all of our constituent you know, um, equations and then canceled things out and worked them out. But what we're really looking for here is the total amount of energy that is released when you are forming Na2O, okay, or, or sodium oxide. So let's actually look at that information and derive things. This is actually a second draft. If you've seen this video before, chances are uh, you looked at the wrong version because as you can see here, I've crossed things out, so very, very sorry. But at least it's Thanksgiving. Anyway, so our first piece of information we're given is that the delta H of formation of sodium gas is equal to 107 kilojoules. Okay, so what we're actually saying here is we start off with the basic elemental form of sodium, right? So we're going to write that down. We're then going to look at our product. We have sodium gas, all right? Do we need to change our coefficients? No, we don't. So we have a one-to-one. -one. We have sodium solid turns into sodium gas, all right? And our change in enthalpy will be 107 kilojoules. The very second one that we have here is the delta H of formation of oxygen gas is equal to 249 kilojoules. All right, now I made a mistake here, so please throw that out the window. What I'll do first is the basic elemental form of oxygen should be O2 gas, okay? And then it'll turn into O gas, mono, it goes from diatomic to monoatomic, right? AKA it has two oxygens and one oxygen, okay? Then I'll deal with the coefficients. How many oxygens do I have here? I have two. How many oxygens do I have here? I only have one, all right? So I'm gonna have to balance that out by putting in one half O2 gas, okay? You're not going to do it by altering your product because you know what you want, okay? You want just one oxygen gas. This is delta H of formation. You just want one oxygen gas. So whenever you're changing the coefficients in a delta H of formation problem, you're only changing the reactants. That's why this is one half O2 gas and and not O2 gas turns into two oxygen gas, which is a mistake I made here. Okay, so sorry again. Thanksgiving. Anyway, so the third one here is the ionization energy of sodium gas is equal to 496 kilojoules. Well, the fact that it's ionization energy by definition means that you're dealing with a gas. You're pulling electrons away from a gas, okay? So you start off with your sodium gas, all right? You're then going to turn that into sodium plus, that's a sodium cation with a plus one charge, plus an electron, okay? Whenever you write out something that's ionization energy or electron affinity, two things you should keep in mind. First thing is that your element is always in gaseous form. The second thing is that whenever you write out your equation, you should always write it as an addition problem, okay? So I'm not going to say here, Na gas minus an electron turns into Na plus cation. I'm going to write Na gas turns into sodium cation plus an electron, okay? Because it's always going to be an addition problem. So this is my third equation. Now, two stars right here next to four and five because we're dealing with electron affinity. Now, according to the book definition of electron affinity and the way that we should know it, is that electron affinity is already the amount of energy require, uh, the amount of energy that, that is released, right? If you were basically to throw an electron at this element. So if I were to give you a positive number here, okay, that would actually be the amount of energy that is released, okay? We're using the definition from the book from, I believe, chapter four. 
Okay, that's a little tricky because in thermodynamics, all right, in chapter 10, we learned that a positive number in front of any form of energy, right, means that that amount of energy is being absorbed, okay? So if I were given plus 141, this wasn't electron affinity, this would mean that 141 kilojoules is being absorbed, correct? So, unfortunately, we're going to use the book definition. We're going to say, all right, the electron affinity of oxygen means we have 141 kilojoules released. Automatically, we'll say released. I'm hoping on the test they'll actually say that it is released. Let's all cross our fingers there. Okay, but for now, I'm going to translate that over to negative 141 kilojoules because I want this to be consistent with the chapter 10 definition of an exothermic or an endothermic reaction, right? In this case, it's exothermic, so it'll be released. 141 kilojoules will be released. Now, I always want this to be an addition problem because it's an electron affinity. So I'm going to take oxygen gas, monoatomic oxygen gas, because that's what they told me to do. All right, I'm then going to add an electron. Okay, and that's going to turn into an oxygen with a negative one charge, aka an anion, a gaseous oxygen. Okay, the second one here is, or number five rather, is our second electron affinity of oxygen gas. Okay, this is monoatomic oxygen, uh, is going to be negative 744. That means that the amount of energy released is negative 744, aka energy is being absorbed. Okay, so I'll translate that using our chapter 10 definition. This is positive 744 kilojoules. And I'm going to have an oxygen anion already with a negative one charge because this is the second electron affinity. So it's already grabbed one of the electrons, okay? We're going to add an electron to it because this is always going to be a, uh, a, an addition problem, right? And that's going to turn into an oxygen with a negative two charge. This is a negative two anion of oxygen, of gaseous oxygen, okay? This is my fifth equation. My sixth and final one, thank goodness, is the lattice energy of sodium oxide, right? And we're saying that it caught, it, you basically need this to absorb 2,608 kilojoules, right? I'm going to write in the kilojoules. I, I've been neglecting that here. Um... 2,608 kilojoules, it needs to absorb that in order to break down into its constituent elements, or sorry, constituent ions in a gaseous form. So we should start off with a solid, and we should end up with two uh, ions in a gaseous form, right? So here's what I did. I took Na2O solid. I then broke it down. I have two sodium ions here, okay? These are sodium cations in a gaseous form, and I'm adding one oxygen with a negative two charge, this is an anion here, this is a cation, anion, in a gaseous form, okay? This is how you split up your lattice energy, okay? Because you're always, you're always breaking this down. If they're asking you for the lattice energy, you're breaking this down. If you're talking about the delta H of formation, however, you are building, you are starting with constituent ions or, or elements and you are building something. This is a decomposition reaction. This is a, this is basically a constructive. I forgot exactly what they said, but basically you can see that you start with two, you end up with one. Here you end up, you start with one, you end up with two. So this is breaking down and our total change in enthalpy will be 2,608. Okay. So in total, these should be your derived equations. Okay. So as follows, you can pause the video here. So that way you can use this information for the next video. If you really want to keep in mind that we are going to find this out, okay? And that's going to be the focus of our next video.